Hi guys, and welcome to another video, and it is finally, finally that time of year where the uh, this season has come to an end, and uh, before you say anything, no, I didn't make a match review of the last game, and it wasn't even just because we got B, it was because I've just made that same review time and time again, and to be honest with you, I just could not be bothered. You know, how many times am I going to sit there and say, we need a striker, or we weren't good enough, or this weren't right, these decisions weren't right, it's... I feel like I'd just done it too many times over the course of the season and I was getting bored and pretty sick of it and I think the second half of the season, I'm pretty sure every Sunderland YouTuber will vouch for me when I say this, it's, it has been such an uphill struggle in terms of making content because there's just been nothing to cling on to in terms of positivity. It's been a shit show and performances just weren't good enough. It was really scraping the barrel for any kind of positivity and that's when it can become really draining making content. So I do apologise I didn't make one last time out, but I think I've made enough match reviews covering defeats this season considering we were the uh, one of the highest uh, sort of the teams in terms of defeats uh, in the championship this season just gone. So uh, I've made plenty of defeats in terms of reviews. If you want to go watch them, I just could not be arsed with that one against Jeff Wednesday at all. But now, of course, now that it is that time of the year where... You know, the second the final ball is kicked, there's rumours, things are happening straight away, and quite a bit has happened over the last uh, two or three days. A lot of it has been just rumours, but even just as much as today, there has been a little bit of news from the club in terms of um, the retail side of things and improvements that way, which is a positive, so it's nice to speak about. So I will probably begin with that, actually, just to get that one out of the way. So the club have announced that they have, uh, of course, secured that deal with, is it with F Fanatics, I think it's called, um, they're turning the, the Black Cat's house into a new store, which of course means that in turn there's going to be certain bricks where of course where there's memorial bricks of different people uh, on there, which I know are quite close to a lot of people's hearts. Uh, they are being removed for different reasons and of course there's going to be further information on that I believe, but that is going to be turned into a, a new club store and of course the whole retail online side is going to be totally refreshed and revamped, which is what we've needed for the best part of a decade to be honest with you because... We are so behind the times when it comes to the retail side of things. That'll make things a lot better, hopefully, anyway, fingers crossed. We say this, but Sunderland, we find a way to screw up quite a lot of shit that seems like it's almost impossible to screw up, don't we? So uh, we shall see how that goes. So that is the first thing, the first bit of official news. Secondly, there has been a lot of rumours in terms of management and who's going to come in, who isn't going to come in, who's going, who's staying, all that kind of stuff. Um, and yesterday, I thought I'd just go over this little bit of a story before anyone gets carried away or confused. I just thought I'd bring this little bit to your attention. So, of course, Will Still has been one of those uh, names that's been linked with us since January, but, of course, it's been largely speculated that we didn't want to pay the compensation package the club he was with at the time, and then we ended up going with the cheapo op option, which was, of course, Beal, uh, which <laughs> we, uh, you know, the less said about that, the better. But, uh, but anyway, so on TalkSport yesterday, there was a bloke, I forget his name, it, it escapes me out, I listened to it yesterday on TalkSport, uh, a bloke was saying how, I think he was one of the hosts, um, he was stating that because this lad, he li this man, he lived in Sunderland and uh, he, he was being a bit cryptic at first, saying that there's a, a ginger head coach who's coming from Europe who's just left his post, which of course is hinting at Will Still and saying that this man ha has been uh, house hunting in Sunderland and he knows this for a fact. There was no sort of like comical aspect for it. There was no sort of like jokey remarks or anything like that. He was pretty much saying that this is happening. So understandably, a lot of people, a lot of news outlets were running with this, stating that, you know, Will Steele is house hunting in Sunderland and he's going to be the next Sunderland head coach. So of course, about eight, nine, ten hours passed and everyone's on the train of Will Steele's going to be coming in. And then this bloke who was on TalkSport said, oh, by the way, that was a joke. Right. Like, Fucking hilarious. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, it just, there was no comical aspect to what he said whatsoever and definitely wasn't funny. And I don't think it was a joke at all. He wanted to say something to stir up a bit of, uh, a, a bit of you know, drama. And also with the drama comes clicks and views and what have you. And he's done a job in that sense. But it wasn't a joke. It wasn't funny. And it was just a bit weird. But there we go. So that's what that was. If it, Just in case anyone else is still on board with this whole Will Still thing, it, it was apparently... A fucking hilarious joke but you know but that's not to say will still might not come because there's still a lot of rumors and there's a few little things and not us Sunderland fans particularly in recent seasons we we go off so many tiny little tidbits of information on social media you know on instagram uh, there was quite a big Sunderland fan page that posted i think it was a picture of will still or whatever saying no will still come to Sunderland or whatever it was 
and Will still liked that post, which I know, again, it sounds so tedious and minuscule when I'm saying it, but we read into a lot of stuff, don't we? And a lot of cryptic messages that he's made in his own Instagram, which, to be fair, it actually makes me dislike him a little bit. I don't know about you guys. I do like Will still. I've already always said that I want Will still there, but I'm seeing little bits of his personality and he looks quite egotistical in that sense where you're making sort of graphics of yourself, which I'm sure other people have made, but then leaving cryptic messages, I find that just a bit... Just a bit odd. Do you know what I mean? I'm not really a massive fan of that. But either way, I'm not going to knock him too much. Um, but yeah, so that is the whole Will Still sort of debacle. So it might still happen, but there was just a lot of random bits of drama that was going on yesterday. But now, in, in terms of player outgoings, a couple of uh, reports have come out today from somewhat reputable sources. Uh, one being Bradley Dack and the other being club captain Corey Evans. So Bradley Dack, that's a, for me, that was a foregone conclusion. I would have absolutely lost my shit if he somehow got offered another deal or another year. That would have been mental because he's offered nothing. Like a lot of players this season, he's offered nothing. He was a Mowbray signing, which went to shit. You can see why we signed him. You know, he was on a free at the time. Yeah, we had, he'd picked up his injuries, but in years gone by, he'd been ex excellent in the championship. But he was injury prone throughout. And when he did come on, he looked like an overweight pub player. Do you know what I mean? That's what he looked like, unfortunately, for us. And it didn't work out. So, for me... Let's be brutal. Good riddance, to be honest with you. Now, Corey Evans, it's a difficult one for me because I had such a hit and miss relationship with him when we first signed him. You know, we're in League One, and all I ever really saw from him was sideways and backwards passes. And I don't think I don't, a lot of us were the same. We didn't really realise how good he was until we did sort of come up or that sort of last season where he really did start to show his value, and we saw how much we started to control the midfield and his sort of presence behind closed doors as well. Well, it was massive, and we don't think we realised that until quite late on. But then, of course, he did pick up his massive injury where he's been out for the best part of a year. And for someone of, of his age, you know, if he was 27, 28, and you picked up that injury, I would have probably said give him another year, even just for his presence around the change rooms and around the background alone. And maybe he could be able to get back to the way he was. But because of his age, you know, to go from an injury that, that significant, it'll be so difficult to get back to you know, where we would want him. It would probably take a season in itself just to get even nearly to where he was. So if he was to go, I'm not saying that I'm buzzing that it had happened, but I do understand it. But that also goes with the, the premise that we 100% need more experience. And again, how many times have we said that this season? Not only experience, but leaders. You know, you know, you, you can get leaders of any age. You know, there's 18 year olds who have just a natural leadership ability, but someone who does have that presence, we desperately need that. And generally that comes with experience. So those are the bits of drama sort of going around the club at the moment. So I think I've covered everything quite quickly there. I'm, I think I've done a, an okay job there. I might have missed something. Something might be going on as I'm sat here recording this. But that is pretty much everything. So if you let me know in the comments down below how you feel about the whole potential Will Still, is there anyone else you would like to uh, see come to the club? There's the other bloke. He was the, uh, what is he, the... Um, sort of philosophy head coach or some, some uh, uh, by immune is it Reen Murich or whatever his name I can't pronounce it for shit he's, he's one of the academy managers isn't he and he's, he's got some fancy name at Bayern Munich which I won't be totally against but I'd like someone who has a bit more experience as a head coach um, although it does sound fantastic with the, the title they've given at Bayern um, and of course how would you feel about uh, the new store the new um, the new retail side of things and with Dak and Evans it looks like they're going to be they're going to be going. And also, I'm just, I'll just add at the end of this, we need to announce our manager incredibly soon, our head coach. It needs to be done incredibly soon because before we know it, pre-season's going to come. You know, if we want to sign players, players are going to want to know who's going to be coaching them. You know, who's going to be coaching them. We can't balls this up. They've had half a fucking season that the, you know, the hierarchy have happily thrown down the drain to have a think about who's going to come in next. So I would hope to God that we're going to get some concrete news in the next week or so. Uh, that's how I feel anyway. But either way, let me know in the comments uh, how you feel about everything. If you enjoyed, please hit the like button for me. It'd be massively appreciated. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already to become a fully fledged member of the Sony Army. But for now, take care and stay jammy.